All right. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Boxed Lunch from the Fort Worth Community Arts Center. Today we have another fabulous guest with us, the one and only Christy Howard, who is the managing <laughs> director of Jubilee Theater. How are you doing today, Christy? I am great. How are you today? I am doing very well, thank you. Another beautiful day and uh, glad to be here. And uh, more importantly, so appreciative of you taking the time to join us and having lunch with me today. Oh, wonderful. I've been looking forward to this. I think this is a neat concept. Well, we are certainly uh, very grateful to have you. And with that being said, would you mind just introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about who and what you do? Sure. I am Christy Howard, Managing Director of Jubilee Theater. I've had the pleasure of serving in that role for now. This is my fourth season. And um, I will tell you, we have had some hurdles and we've had some triumphs, but I never expected this. So um, just navigating these waters, just like any other arts professional and um, looking forward to when we can turn the lights back on. Indeed, I think we are all getting a little antsy to get back to it and uh, continuing to create art in a live setting. So exactly. Um, do you mind telling us a little bit about what is on your lunch menu today? Okay, so spring and summer, I really try to make an effort to go light. Um, and I also try to um, let my lunch meal kind of be my larger meal of the day. So I'm not sleeping on something so heavy. So today I'm going to do a citrus slaw and a crab cake. So. It sounds fancier than what it really is. I'm just throwing stuff in a bowl. So, and <laughs> that's very nice. Very, um, very easy. Uh, do you mind telling us a little bit about the ingredients involved in that? Okay, so I did a lot of prep work. So this here is shredded um, green cabbage, purple or red cabbage, however, wherever you come from, it's purple cabbage up north, red cabbage in the south, <laughs> and then shredded carrots. Then we've got some shredded green apples, and um, shredded mango, Ooh. raisins, and then we'll zest lemons and orange, and then add orange juice. That acts as your preservative, as well as your dressing. And this is really one of those salads, the longer it sits, the better it tastes. Um, this is also, you will, this is really out of the cancer um, cookbook. It has some of the best nutrients in it to help fight cancer. And I know that because it's on both sides of my family, but um, it really is um, it really is a great refreshing salad. And again, it's one of those as it sits, the better it tastes. Um, and then the crab cakes. Okay, Jason, I cheated. I went to Tom Thumb, which is like my favorite grocery store. And I buy these crab cakes in the meat butcher block. And then I love how uh, cast iron skillet kind of sears and makes everything all nice and crispy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick this in the oven. So by the time we plate, it'll be ready. Very nice. What do you set your oven at? Um, 375 in the oven. It's already nice. preheated. So again, by the time we mix all this up, we'll be good to go. And then I'm also going to do, because um, I kind of took my cue from Pro Joe, you can't have lunch without something great to drink. That's true. So I'm make a cucumber mint lemonade. So I've got all of my little ingredients here already ready. Wow. Juice the lemons and all of that other good stuff and mix and have a chat. And then for those days, especially during this time of quarantine, you want to make yourself feel a little better, a splash of vodka or tequila in this also works. Just a splash, right? A big splash. A big splash. <laughs> it looks absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to see the finished product. I can't so, wait um, for you to see it. If you've been paying any attention, I, I try to keep it somewhat simple. And again, I have, I think, four ingredients today. So uh, I'm going with some uh, uh, shrimp tacos today. Okay. So, um, I've literally got some uh, shrimp that I'll throw and uh, saute in the skillet there as well. I've got okay. cheese, and then I've got some uh, fresh tomatoes that I cut up. Mm -hmm. And then I've also got a little bit of uh, sour cream and also some salsa that I'll be throwing on there with some okay. uh, tortillas that I also got from Tom Thumb. So uh, uh, great minds think alike. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> 
Exactly. Okay, so while we're getting our stuff prepped here, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind talking a little bit about how your organization has been affected and is currently dealing with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. <laughs> and how long do we have? As long as you want. <laughs> uh, well, you know what, I will say this. It, this probably could not have come at a better time for Jubilee. When we got the word that we were going to have to close, we were actually in tech week um, for our production, How I Got Over. Um, which is a fantastic musical that is really going to speak well when we can turn the lights on to how did I manage with this crisis and it's filled with music that just really kind of soothes the soul. You'll, you'll escape for two hours if we can get you in the theater. <laughs> but um, it has, I will tell you that what I don't think what a lot of people realize, you'll see arts organizations do some phenomenal things. Um, but what I will say on a serious note, um, and I will just be as transparent as I can, ticket sales accounts for about 50% of our operating budget. So when you're at a point um, to where your ticket sales are affected, it severely impacts your budget. Um, and then when the other 50% is relied on with unearned income in a time when the economy is falling, <laughs> uh, it does make it a little difficult as well as scary um, to um, make sure that you're able to one, keep staff employed during this time um, and to even more so have a plan for how we come out of this. And if I'm able to actually have the funds to put on the next show. So I, I say that our show is up, the stage is ready, the actors are ready, our artistic director is ready. Um, and then during this time, we actually use this time as a season of preparation. As um, edicts have been passed down, as guidelines have come about, there are some guidelines that have been standard. Um, as it relates to public health during this time. So we've installed our plexiglass at our box office and our concession stands. We've made accommodations in our bathroom by installing plexiglass um, by our sink so that we can keep the sink flow. Um, we know we're gonna have to kill some stalls in the ladies restroom, but we prepared for that. Um, same thing as the men, we've gone to touchless fixtures as far as our soap dispensers and things. We've got plenty of hand sanitizer. We've gotten all of our PPE. Juan Bui has done a fabulous job of making sure that the actors are safe. By We've got extra sanitizing steamers. We're doing dry cleaning bags. We've got mask protocols. We've even put up plexiglass in our dressing room so that there is individual designated space for each actor. And, and, and anybody who knows anything about theater, the dressing room is kind of like the community, we're all together and there's really no separation, but we're trying our best to make one, our actors feel safe about coming back to the space, knowing that, um, like you said, how do I help keep you safe? Um, one of Jubilee's grand traditions are that the actors go out into the lobby, we greet everyone. Um, at this point in time, we're going to forego that. We'll be thanking and waving from the stage um, in hopes that you understand it. Um, we've got our thermometers ready to scan temperatures coming in of both staff, actors, crew, as well as our guests. We're um, having uh, already planned to cut the size of our house so that we can do social distancing. So there are some things that we've already put in place to welcome individuals back. And that has been our thing, not sitting back during this season, twiddling our thumbs. And, and I think that you'll almost kind of go stir crazy if you don't do something. So I'm really thankful for the staff, the team, as well as the board support for allowing us the room to make these decisions as well as to do what's needed so that when we are able to open, we can welcome you back responsibly and safely. Wow, it sounds like a ton of work has gone into all of that, along with some great minds coming up with some very, very valuable procedures and practices. So hats off to you for uh, taking those measures and, and doing all of those things to keep the community as safe as possible, really. Uh, a lot of great stuff. Are your actors still rehearsing? Are you using any of the virtual platforms to stay fresh with the material? 
you know, again, Juan Bui, our artistic director, has done a you know, that actor family in, in the midst of a production, that family environment, that cohesiveness is not just born when the lights come on. It's something that's born out of weeks of rehearsal. And he has really done a fabulous job about keeping his hands on the group, keeping them together. So yes, they've done um, table reads online. They've rehearsed um, choreography. The choreographer has been very gracious to record some things. So they've still got their steps together. They're just itching to get back on Jubilee ground. We all are. We all are. Well, it sounds like you are ahead of the curve and uh, just waiting again for the lights to be turned on. And uh, as Jubilee always does, I'm sure it will be a fantastic presentation. And we can't wait to get over there and check those things out. So hats off, seriously. Thank um, you. Thank all you. right. So do you mind talking a little bit about uh, some of that meal prep? I know that you've got a lot of it in that bowl already. I'm going to start warming up my butter and throw the shrimp in. Um, what's your uh, prep procedure there uh, for the things that you did prior to getting it all in the bowl? Okay. So, of course, before any of this happened, I was an insane clean freak. So we did a vinegar wash. I was before any of this. It's just ask my family. I'm really kind of OCD-ish. <laughs> um, I did a vinegar wash of the um, red cat, all of my vegetables and everything. And then I shred them. I have this nice little shredder that's a hand turn called the Salad Master. Yeah. <laughs> and so it has allowed me to basically take this and shred it almost like what you see commercially. And so um, it was half of a green cabbage and a fourth of a red cabbage and two carrots. And it made all of this. It really does make your food stretch um, because you're not really wasting anything. And then as, I, as we're talking, I'm going to go ahead and add, these are the green tomatoes. And it's two small green Granny Smith tomatoes. I like the tartness. I love tart. I like that tart and sweet. And so then you have this mango. It's shredded as well. You just throw that on in there. Um, and then I love color. But I also, I love craisins. I'm not a big raisin person. I know that really doesn't make sense. But I love craisins. And also, craisins, you can soak in vodka and drop it in cranberries. Tell therapy. And drop it in um, champagne. Oh, um, man. Yeah. Very, very good. Everybody uh, yeah. strawberries. And you just really just mix this together and let these mix. And it becomes a really beautiful color display. Wow. So the trick to this. The trick is the zesting of the orange. Um, and the zesting of the lemon. So I'm just going to sit here and zest while you put your butter on. I'm going to zest. <laughs> All right. Well, while you're zesting, um, would you speak a little bit about what you've learned about yourself and the Jubilee organization during all of this trying times? I will tell you, Jubilee has gone 39 continuous seasons without a break in programming. I think for me, um, the resilience of the Jubilee spirit is one of the things that I appreciate. And I appreciate the opportunity during my tenure here to see that. Um, what I also realize is that, um, as I feel like most of the arts organizations are, trying to come up with ways to service our audience, um, to be quite honest, most of our audiences are over the age of 60. So we've got to service that audience in a virtual way that is user friendly, as well as start bringing in new audience members. And I think all of us realize there's a huge push for audience development um, and making sure that that next group of theater goers really enjoy the connection. The, the millennials would much rather watch it on Netflix, on their time, on their schedule. Yes. So how do we give them the yearning for that connectional experience, which is theater? Um, and so that's one of the big things that we'll be working on when we return, um, is figuring out ways to reach that group. Um, but I, I will say that one of the biggest things that I realized, if I had to be in this fight with anybody, I'm glad that I have the staff that I have. And they have been a, a blessing to Jubilee, um, and a blessing to the community that we've been able to, to, again, accomplish these things. Because what's that's meant, that is meant, okay, I'm coming in at this time to take care of this. Okay, well, you do this, and if you'll leave it on the counter, then I'll pick it up at this time. 
So um, we really um, have opened up the window. I think we communicate better as a group. Um, it's just really amazing what this season has done. What have I learned about me? I do. I have a three-year-old, a dog, <laughs> and uh, what I found is that I struggle <laughs> balancing that, but I also figured out how to get rid of them, is to go to my garden. Nobody wants to dig in the garden. So that's my escape. I love, I, I have rediscovered my love of gardening. Um, I didn't have time. And then I also realized in this season of how many things that I was doing that I didn't need to do. Being forced to have to sit down and figure out a different way to handle business has, has really made me realize that we spend a lot of time allowing the stuff of life to convolute our time. And so I think when this, when this is over and we find some sense of normalcy, I'm really gonna challenge myself to be a better steward of my time and my space and to not allow people and things to clutter my life. This has been a woo moment for me. Um, I hate that it had to come in the form of a pandemic. But. <laughs> So I think you might have answered my next question a little bit, which was okay. what has become your focus and a way to pass the time during the stay at home sheltering? Sounds like you've done a lot of gardening. What's in your garden? Okay, squash, um, yellow squash, cucumbers, four different varieties of tomatoes, um, green beans, cabbage, which are a little early, which is what I figured out now for Texas. So they're not really growing too well. So I promise that if I leave them in the ground by September, I should see movement. Um, I've got some carrots. Same thing with my carrots. I'm a little early on those, but they should weather well. Um, and then I've got an herb selection. So the mint in my lemonade came from my herb garden. So, wow. And I kind of like that. I think I want to be a, chef, a garden chef. That's what they call it. I can just go out, pick it, bring it back in. Wow. Save some trips to Tom Thumb. <laughs> Is your garden your entire backyard? It sounds like you've got a whole uh, farmer's market back there. No, it's not. It's a five by 10 raised box. And it's just enough for me to pick a couple of pieces for enough for me to prepare a meal. It's not um, a full garden. Of course, I'm a country girl, but I come from the country. So we've had rows and rows of vegetables and peas and things of that nature. I'm not trying to do that. That's too much work. That's why I ran to the city. But uh, I do like the ability to be able to have some fresh things. And I enjoy watching things grow. Wow. That's good stuff. Good stuff. So um, uh, do you have any um, secret ingredients or uh, cooking tips? I know you mentioned a couple uh, there for uh, deliciousness. What's your, uh, what's your go-to uh, secret ingredient for that particular meal there? Um, <laughs> let's see, secret ingredient. I don't think that you can have a good crab cake without a room loin, so I need them to pay me for this advertising I'm about to do. Um, Louisiana fish fry products has a room log sauce that is amazing. So why make it when you can get it in a jar? This is phenomenal. Yes, I want my money, Louisiana fish fry. I well, just uh, we'll, just, we'll do a little service ad for mine as well. Trader Joe's. Okay. <laughs> got some uh, wonderful chili and lime seasoning blend right there that I'm just going to toss on my shrimp as well while they're out there. And then that'll give a little bit of addition and some of that spice to, uh, to those shrimp mm -hmm. there as well. So I'm just going to mix them around. Mine are coming around pretty good there. I'll give you a little glimpse there. Ooh. Starting to pink it up a little bit, and they absolutely smell delicious. One of the other things I like about that seasoning is when I throw the tortillas in at the end, it also helps to sop up that butter and stuff. Soften up, and you get all that good stuff. The, I right. call that the good stuff at the base. <laughs> then this is um, the I zested the orange, so then I juiced it. This was actually my grandmother's. I remember my grandmother using this. And so when she passed, I got it. So this is like one of my favorite things. I always remember her when I use it. Wow. And then we just toss all this good stuff together. 
just absolutely looks gorgeous too. What wonderful colors. And uh, I, I'm telling you, when this is all over, I might have to uh, sneak over to your house. Maybe you can make some lunch and uh, we can try to. Those, those champagne glasses you were talking about. <laughs> yes, I keep them. <laughs> Christy, while you're mixing that around, would you mind talking a little bit? I know you mentioned specifically Jubilee and, uh, and your organization in regards to what all you've done to prepare for the reopening. How do you see the arts in general adapting now that these businesses are trying to come up with plans and things to get people back in their buildings? Well, um, <laughs> I think that, um, you know, there, there are several things that I see. I think that we're gonna have the opportunity to do what we do best, which is create. I think this is the opportunity for the performing arts and arts organizations to chart our new future because this is not going to be business as usual. Um, I believe that uh, as we are looking towards, and that I think I started answering the question earlier, we gotta talk about audience development we got to talk about how uh, multiple mediums, besides bringing people into our space physically, how do we get individuals into our space virtually? And I know for some of us, it has been a challenge. Um, there are quite a few of the smaller theaters who don't even, including Jubilee, don't even have that mechanism in place. And so we're all playing catch up. <laughs> right. um, and so um, I, I think that that's going to really be significant for us. Um, in, in charting what these next seasons look like, even um, so much so forth of having, because we don't know what this thing is going to do. We don't know what next fall is going to look like. I mean, we're, we're all holding our breath, waiting to exhale here. Um, but if you're planning the next season, I think that it's really important for organizations. Maybe you look at having a streaming season subscription so that you don't lose that patron just because they can't walk in the front door. Right. So there are things that we're looking at and moving towards as an organization. Um, even in your ed outreach, I think um, um, the DMA has done a fabulous job at putting together um, putting together kits for kids to do at home. You go yes. online, you order, this is the time you log in, here's your kit for this art project. And we have got to do those things and realizing that we, our touch points have to change. Um, and that connection has to be created differently. And I, th I really honestly believe that the arts, humanities are the best of us. And so we can do this. We can change what this looks like. And then we'll have an opportunity to rejoice when we're all able to get out and be together again. But until then, I just really think that we do what we do best, which is create, innovate, and move forward and become a new normal. Yeah, it's great points, all of those. So what uh, item or food venue do you most look forward to indulging in now that people are starting to get back out and around? Uh, see, for me, it's going to be a minute still. But uh, I will tell you, there's these things at Papado's that I absolutely love, and they're seasonal, and they're called sautéed crab fingers. Again, crab. You see this? You see this? I, I um, see a theme. You see the thing. They're absolutely wonderful. It's more so the sauce and a reason to eat with your fingers. I'm just going to be honest. There is no cute way to eat those things. It's not, so don't even try. But I really do enjoy that dish, and I'm looking forward to that. And the only reason why I'm not making it is because I haven't figured out how to make that sauce. <laughs> wow. Good stuff. Good stuff indeed. All right. How are you coming on your uh, preparation there? Oh, good. I'm already adding my lemon juice, sugar, and the water, and now I'm getting ready to add the good stuff to the lemonade. So my cucumbers and my sliced lemon and my mint from my garden. Just mixing all that up. Hold that picture up there when you get a second, once you get it all in there, so we can see all that good stuff going in there. Sure. Ha ah, ah. ha. Oh, wow. Oh, that looks absolutely delicious indeed. So Christy, while you're stirring that around, what helpful community resources are you seeing or using personally? And how can your organization be assisted or provide assistance to other artists and arts organizations? 
Oh, wow. That's a loaded question. I will tell you one. <laughs> that is, it's a loaded question. Um, I will tell organizations, I think first and foremost, um, which is probably some of the first calls that I made were to talk to your vendors, your vendors who you use on a monthly basis. Um, everyone is having to make adjustments. So um, they would much rather retain you as a customer than use you. So keep that line of communication open. Um, and I will tell you that you would be surprised what your donors will do during this time. Um, you know, if you don't ask, you can't receive. I will also tell you that the United Way, as well as the City of Fort Worth, Downtown Fort Worth Inc., Visit Fort Worth have been tremendous during this time. Um, I really want to thank Bob Jameson, Mitch Whitten, and his team. Um, they have come up with this Open Responsibly campaign, which really challenges everyone to um, really adhere to those guidelines from a business standpoint to really gain customer or patron um, security. Um, and so I think that that's important as we reopen. Um, United Way has stepped up with supplying PPEs to those businesses because that's an extra expense yes. that nobody has planned for, and it's an astronomical expense. So thanks to um, Leah King and her team and um, Sandy Webb for making sure that businesses who are reopening, particularly nonprofits um, who are reopening, have what they need. Um, I again, Mayor Price and her tremendous leadership during this time. Um, I, you know, really like to thank them and Karen and her team there. They have been very communicative, have been very understanding, and have tried to do everything they could. Texas Commission on the Arts, Texans for the Arts, the list could go on. I think what Texans have done is what we do we rally together for one another. Um, I said at the beginning of this um, to my team and even to the board, I really want to see us thrive in this de desert. And it's possible because thriving does not al always mean more resources coming in. Thriving means you survive. And on the other side of it, you put yourself in a place for growth. Um, I also be I honestly believe that if we don't figure out a way to open soon, if we don't figure out a way to continue to help one another, the culture map of Fort Worth will change. Um, quite honestly, just like they said with small businesses, and I think what a lot of people don't realize is that arts organizations are businesses. There's an art is big business. Um, and that if we don't, there will be some of these organizations that won't make it to the other side. And for me, that's hurtful. So I just would love to see us begin to just wrap our arms around each other, kind of like we do with LTL who's done a fabulous job at sharing information, the North Texas Theater Alliance, sharing information and resources and having that one collective voice for our industry in this area. Um, when we start talking about the number of people we serve in the way of patrons, 275,000, when we talk about the 2,300 people that are employed in arts throughout the Metroplex and things of that nature. So, and then when you talk about 4.5% of the national GDP, um, is is the arts. When you talk about organizations, 80% of our budgets go back into the local economy. So when you talk about those things, we make an impact. And, um, you know, I just think that those are, the, those are the things that we should champion and those are the things that we should um, really bring to the for, forefront. Um, when we talk about helping one another, we help one another make sure that those numbers stay in place. And not only that, we help one another in making sure that those numbers grow. Yeah, great information. Hopefully whenever um, we get done with the interview, maybe you can pop back on to the uh, uh, Facebook feed itself and put some of those sure. links down there I would for love anybody to. that might need them. So we'd certainly love to see them. Sure, All right, sure. I think we're moving on to a uh, presentation here. Are you about ready to start plating up? Oh, sure. Let me grab my cakes because I smell them now out of the oven. And while you're doing that, um, Christy, you got any uh, tips or tricks for uh, staying sane and uh, physically and mentally healthy during all of this? Not really. <laughs> honesty. Sounds like, sounds like honesty is your tip and trick right there. Not, not really. Not really. I, I, I don't. Um, I'm going to tell you, I have 
selfishly enjoyed this time with my family. I really have. Um, as much as I'm looking forward to going back to work, I really have enjoyed having the time that I had um, with them. I think that, again, we've allowed life to be convoluted that we don't really take this time. So today, because of this, my honey gets a cooked meal for lunch instead of a sandwich. So. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Okay, so I've got my shrimp on my tortillas here and I put a little sour cream down there. I'm just gonna add my cheese and tomatoes. You wanna talk a little bit about plate and yours? Oh yes, it's not gonna be fancy. You get a dollop of salad, yes, dollop. I'm very, I'm very, very uh, not formal here. A dollop of salad and you get a crab cake and you get this wonderful sauce again, Louisiana Fish Fry Company. I wanna make sure that you see this. And you put a little bit of this on the side. And it's almost like the Heinz ketchup in the in the bottle. It never comes out when you want it to. <laughs> so you just stick your knife in there. That'll work. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. The Heinz ketchup on the side. You just kind of put a little bit there. Put a little bit there. Well, you've inspired me to put a little bit more color in mine here. I'm going to throw some jalapenos on mine as well, so. Oh, that's nice. I just I escaped for a minute to grab my little parsley here on the top. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of that salsa on there. Mm -hmm. I think that about does it for me. How are you coming? I am coming good. I'm getting ready to pour my beverage here. Oh, yes. All right, well, while you're finishing up, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a little insight into mine here. It never okay. looks as pretty as I think it does, but. Those are my tacos right there. I got the shrimp in there. Also that cheese and tomatoes there. Mm -hmm. Those, uh, wonderful heated tortillas there. I'm just gonna give it a little spin and uh, okay. show you what I got going on there. Shrimp Tacos 101. Ah, looks good, looks good. Okay, so here's mine. My slaw, my citrus slaw that I put together, and my light golden brown crispy. It's got a little crunch to it. Crab cake, little alert sauce, and a little bit of parsley. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And my cucumber mint lemonade. Absolutely I'm more love it. About the splash when the camera goes off. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you don't have to wait for that. It, when the camera goes off, I just put the lemonade aside and go straight to the bottle. <laughs> go straight to the flash, I know, right? So Christy, where can we find out information about yourself as an artist or the Jubilee Theater? You can go visit jubileetheater.org and all of our information is there. Um, you'll see the season lineup and we're hoping that once we figure out what's going on, we can drop our 40th season. We are waiting with bated breath. We're really excited about dropping what that 40th season is going to consist of. And uh, you'll see um, information about myself and the team. Um, and then you'll see information about Jubilee's history, which is really um, a very fantastic storied history. And anytime that you're in downtown uh, Fort Worth, um, Sundance Square. We have the best address in Sundance Square, 506 Main Street. Come on in and take a look. Our walls tell the story in and of itself. So um, again, Jason, thank you. This has been amazing. It, it is my pleasure. And I've, I've been to Jubilee. It's a fabulous facility. You guys do great work there and uh, mm -hmm. just keep it up and keep moving forward. Um, Christy, I know that we had mentioned before we actually went on air as well. Um, I had one more question for you that I feel is very important. And sure. uh, using this as a platform for people to communicate with one another. I was curious if you wouldn't mind talking just a little bit before we left. As a leader of the Black community, could you speak to how I, as an ally, can continue to show my support to the community in these times of civil unrest? I think that there are a couple of things. First off, I don't see myself as a leader of the Black community at all. I see myself as a leader 
I think that a lot of things, I don't think that in this country because of race, racism is so systemic um, in, in, in this culture, unfortunately. Um, but what I will say about Jubilee, albeit founded as an African-American theater, we have one of the most diverse audiences in the Metroplex. Um, I really believe that beyond racism, this is a humanity issue. Um, and I think that uh, systemically across the board, um, when we talk about what has happened to the African-American community during, especially the course of these past few years, there has been one ethnicity after another that has been singled out in some degraded way. Um, the loss of life is the loss of life, be it a pandemic, be it um, a hate crime, um, being war. I, I just honestly believe we have got to, and um, we've got to call ourselves to be kind to one another. And if we operate in a spirit of kindness, I think that we can find some middle ground, um, allow ourselves room to forgive ourselves for what we've done to each other and the space and um, really pull together as a community. I do feel like that these outcries of just people have had enough and when it's almost like when a baby cries I can't express what I'm feeling but I can show you what I'm feeling and that's what this community is doing. Um, I do think that there are some opportunists out there that are taking this and that are exacerbating it far beyond um, a far beyond and, and taking it a little further, but if you can quiet the noise and really hone in to what people, the individuals who are being affected are saying. I just, and I do believe that there's room for criminal reform. I do think that there should be accountability with the um, police departments and any of our um, officials who lead. Um, be it your personal belief, you are not a leader of this community, you're not a leader of that community. If you've been blessed to be in a position of leadership, you're a leader of all people. You're a leader of humans. Um, and if we can ever stop taking those labels off one another, I think that we would be in a far better place. Great words. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, I hear you. I stand with you. Uh, Christy, I can't thank you enough for joining us and um, just really appreciative of you taking the time. Uh, no problem, Jason. Thank you so much for having me. I course. really appreciate it. And uh, best of luck to you guys. I know you, you guys are flipping and trying to figure it out. And I look forward to the day when we can come back and I actually look forward to the day when we can say this is all over. I do too. And I look forward to hugging your neck and seeing your show. It's just I know. Good that they can get there. So, all right. With that being said, we'll have another episode on Friday of Box Lunch. Make sure you tune in and join us. Uh, follow us at the Forward Community Arts Center on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And Christy, with that being said, bon appetit. Have a wonderful afternoon. Please stay safe out there. Love you much. And uh, we'll be seeing you real soon. Okay. Bye bye, everybody. Bye.